Please bend over, Mr. Rawls, and cough. After 26 years of marriage and raising two kids, empty nest season is coming at us faster than we anticipated. So we're doing what any normal married couple would do. We bought a bus. Now we're renovating it into a tiny home on wheels. We named him Bob, and we're figuring it out as we go, just like we did with parenting. I'm Trish. I'm Steve. And together, we're we're Team Team Rawls. Rawls. Hey, everybody, we're back. Yes, finally, working on Bob again. We kind of took a little hiatus thanks to the Texas ice storm. Yeah, we kind of got sidetracked after that because we had some downed trees that we had to take care of, and then it sort of like snowballed into uh, taking care of a lot of other tree issues on our property. And then we thought, let's look at this whole house to-do list, and we decided to take care of a few things on that. One of the projects was turning this area right here, which used to be a garage, into a little studio slash equipment room. And we're still working on the planter, but at least we got it all enclosed. But this is the other project that we're trying to get done. We just need to get it out of here. But we're back. We're like, we gotta get back to Bob. So we're gonna start work on the floor today. In fact, I did make a video about the ice storm and our, like I was videoing through the whole thing. I went to post it and I thought, eh, it's a little whiny. A lot of people had it worse off than we did. I was gonna post it simply for my siblings that live up north because they'd get a kick out of it. But let me know in the comments below if y'all think I should post it. Uh, Anyway, we're gonna get back to it. When we pulled up the floor, we did find quite a bit of rust, but Steve said it's nothing to worry about. It's just surface rust. And so I'm gonna work today on getting this all up through the whole floor. Let's take care of some rust. Okay, so I did as much as I could do for today. This is that great grinder tool that we bought and we just put a bit on here that's basically like really rough sandpaper. And it just, man, it takes the rust off like butter. Uh, but it's pretty much worn out. It's like smooth as skin now. So and this is the only one we have. So we have to go back and get two more. So where are we? Home Depot. Home Depot. Getting some more stuff, some paint cans for the floor or paint, paint bins. Some new, what are those called? You don't know. Oh. Anyway, wheels. the grinding wheels. Another $85. We've been really bad about keeping track about what we're spending. I guess we won't be doing that video on uh, a line item, you know, accounting what of what we spent. spent. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. $40,000 later. This, however, was not on the shopping list. Steve's getting a chocolate shake. Well, maybe he's getting a chocolate shake. We've been sitting here for a few minutes and nobody's saying, welcome to McDonald's. <laughs> That's why I don't go to McDonald's. He may not be getting his chocolate shake after all. Can I get a medium chocolate shake and a small chocolate shake? Great. Sure, what else for you? That's all. 723 second window. <laughs> Thank you, honey. So yeah, McDonald's lost out. We just pulled out because they never like asked him what he wanted. So Whataburger came through again, getting our chocolate shakes on. This is probably the worst strip on the whole bus. This very back little panel. We were waiting till we got a fresh bit for that grinder to really dig into this. Yeesh. Yuck. That is the new one. Look at the difference. And that did about a third of the bus floor. Not, Not quite a third. How's the car going? It's stopped right now. It's not going anywhere. (laughs) <laughs> when is paint day? Uh, six months ago. <laughs> now that we're finished getting all the rust off the floors, it's time to put on this rust inhibitor. It's called Rust Converter Ultra. 
So we will put on a coat of this, wait about 20 to 30 minutes, put on a second coat, and then we'll paint it. But you have to wait about 48 hours to paint. So after our second coat, it's the end of today. The rust inhibitor had like this weird, like grainy texture to it. Like it's almost like it's got gravel mixed into it, which is kind of weird. We weren't expecting that. So hopefully that's the way it's supposed to look. Steve's just going back with a little brush because it looks like the roller didn't get in all like the crevices, like right there, you know, and the little cracks in between and anything that had kind of a big divot. So he's going back with a brush to fill it in. Once he does that, then we'll let it dry and then do a second coat. Okay, so Steve kind of cheated on me. <gasps> Not that kind of cheat. He, I was busy, so I wasn't able to film this, but he painted the floor. So now we have our first coat of paint on there. We have to put a second coat of paint on there, but I thought I'd let him tell you what we used. We used this Rust-Oleum High Performance Rusty Metal Primer, which is what we have on here now. Um, two coats of that. We've got one coat on right now. Two coats of that and then we can start with the subfloor. So that'll, that'll take care no, of that. No, we gotta cover the holes first. Oh, we gotta, yeah, that's right. The we're filling all the gajillion the holes. The surprises holes. floor even holds together. There's so many yeah. holes in it. <laughs> the cleanup for this is kind of nasty because this is an enamel, so it's not a late, it's not a latex-based paint. So. And does, does it have to be enamel? It should be enamel, yeah. Yeah, because enamel is a little bit, I think, stronger and more waterproof maybe mm -hmm. than a latex. I, I, but I'm not a painter, so I don't know that. But to clean up, uh, if you get this on your hands or whatever, then you can use some mineral spirits to get it off. Soap yeah. and water will not take this off, but mineral spirits will. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. So on to our second coat. The next step is to cover up all the holes or fill in all the holes. So Steve did a bunch of research. We looked at using pennies. We looked at using, what were those blanks called? Blanks. Oh, blanks. Thank you. But uh, we saw a video by Aren't We There Yet? It's another YouTube people that we follow. And they did this. We're going to do this. So we are going to cover up all the holes with this Loctite premium construction adhesive. Then we're going to smooth it out, let that dry. And then we're going to go and put this fiberglass cloth into little squares, put them on top of each little hole, and then cover it with this resin. Hopefully we can get this Swiss cheese of a floor nice and smooth. Then we'll give it one more coat of paint and then we'll be ready for a subfloor. There's no backing underneath the hole, so there's nothing to keep the glue or the silicone or whatever you decide to put in there. There's nothing to keep it from falling all the way through onto the ground. And so if we, if we let it sit for just a few minutes, it'll start to harden up because um, it's construction cement. And once it starts to harden up, you can take your little scraper or putty knife or whatever you're using and just kind of gently, kind of gently go over it and it won't fall all the way through. Some of them do fall all the way through if you push too hard on it and you have to go back and put a second little glob of, of the construction cement on there. If you just let it sit for a few minutes and, and you know, go ahead and do a bunch of them and then yeah. just come back from where you first started and go yeah. over them and not to push too hard. I suppose you want to get in through here, huh? Yes, I do. And I'm in your way? Kind of in my way. All right. Okay, the glue is dry. We let it sit overnight, but we did notice in the where the little hole is, the glue or the adhesive was trying to poke up, almost like it expanded when it dried. So we went through and with a little scraper, just kind of scraped off those little humps. And now we're ready to put the fiberglass cloth on with the res resin. Phew, man. You high as a kite, let me get this done. Please bend over Mr. Rawls and cough. Does the glove fit? If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> it fits. I'm guilty. I'm going to put in... Um... We're 
almost done. Just a coat of paint and then it will be done. No, oh, no, oh, no, that's right. no, no. <laughs> a coat of paint, weld up some weld holes, up some. And, then, and then it'll be done. Or actually, no. Weld up some holes, then a coat of paint. Yeah, and then it'll be done. So maybe a month from now. <laughs> We're trying not to get too down on how long this is taking because we only have weekends and nights. And I know a lot of people out there only have weekends and nights. I don't know how y'all do it because we just have other obligations with keeping up our house and kids and all that kind of stuff. So we're trying not to get too down. But any of y'all out there have suggestions on how to make this process go faster, let us know. No, hire someone. They'll we'll probably say, well, you shouldn't have done the that resin stuff. You should have just put pennies down. <laughs> you live and you learn. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, till next time. We're done with the floor. Uh, subscribe. Whatever. Follow us. <laughs> Whose idea was this anyway? becoming his motto yeah yeah and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Oh my god did you just wink no i just went <laughs> cheese ball okay that's good yeah.